So, you know, seeking the truth and discipleship at the beginning wasn't that much different. Subtle, but as the church grew in, let's just say wealth, acceptance of war, an empire, which is where they were when they got to Constantine. Then, when you're seeking truth and you're not worried about discipleship, you can fool yourself. Okay? Now, what I'm trying to say is that I'm not judging other generations of people. I'm not judging the people who put together the creeds and the theology, uh, you know? What I'm, what I'm saying is that in my lifetime, this is the only thing we can speak of, I'm, I'm gonna say. With, if, if I'm gonna share any kind of wisdom with you all, it's not the truth. It's, it's, the, it's what I've learned collectively with my experience. So I have wisdom because I've lived an experience, and that experience is what I would call my wisdom. I'm gonna share with you my wisdom uh, as a Christian. That first time reading the book and saying, hey, I don't think people are following. I haven't changed my mind. I don't think people really are following this book. And I've come to understand that uh, the book is not being followed because uh, at this point, uh, a truth-based faith, I'm not saying it ain't right or wrong. I'm just saying it doesn't work. There's no connection with professing the Apostles' Creed uh, with anything that has to do with the discipleship of the dead Jew on a tree in the first century. Because see, when you read it as a discipleship text, it's a uh, duck. Uh, this book tells us how to live with each other and it tells you to uh, love your enemies. Folks, there is no way you can love your enemies and prepare to kill them at the same time. Any fair reading of the guy Jesus in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and all the other books after him would tell you that wealth is a problem. Stay away from it. But what did they say? It's the root of all evil. evil? I mean, what do you think, you're kidding? Yeah. And uh, empire is the problem. The Romans were the ones who nailed him to the cross. The Romans were the only ones who had the authority to nail anybody to the cross. If a dead Jew's on a tree, it's because the Romans put him there. And if there are Jews helping the Romans, uh, and who happened to run the temple and are the church leadership of Jesus' day. You know what he called them? A den of thieves. He was not impressed with his church leadership. Yeah, any fair reading would tell you that. So, uh, I, uh, I'm, <coughs> I'm, I'm here to try to uh, uh, persuade you uh, to uh, reassess what it means to uh, follow uh, Jesus and uh, in this late age that we live in, late age. What do I mean by that? Um, well, this is my wisdom. This is what I see. Uh, let's just talk about what I know in Iowa. For 72 years, I've been living here. We're called the farm state. We're feeding the world, that's what we believe. And in some ways we are. But what are we feeding the world? And what have we done in my lifetime? In my lifetime, we have lost half of the soil that God has given this piece of land. One generation, baby boomers, and we think we're entitled to figure out how to feed everybody uh, and wasting half of the soil that God gave 
the human race to work with here. Uh, do you catch the arrogance there? And that soil all went, and it ain't neutral. It went all down the river, and it's causing major global warming stuff uh, down there in uh, uh, Louisiana and that place over the Gulf. And, and it, it's not like we got the same soil, like we lost half of our good soil, we have half of it left. The soil we have left right now in Iowa is not good soil. If, if, if you go to Iowa State, they'll teach about all those little animals in the soil that are making it rich and bountiful. Well, we're killing them the way we farm things through oil and intensification and bigness. Uh, and it's dead. We can't grow anything in this soil unless we put oil-based stuff in it. We take oil-based stuff out. It's all oil-based, capital-intense, high-tech, giant farms so we can feed millions of people a diet that's killing us. You know, I, we say we, we feed poor hungry people at the Catholic Worker, and indeed we do. But I'll let you tell you, you know something about poor hungry people in this country. They're obese at even a higher rate than most of the population. And this population has the most obese people in the world. You hear what I'm saying here? Uh, and uh, it's our food system. And we may be feeding millions, but we're feeding millions of people into slavery. Because we're dependent on a food system that's killing us in the inside and killing the environment. Am I right or wrong on some of these swiping big, big view things? So as I look at it, uh, Global agriculture, as it's done in Iowa, is war on the planet when we're not at war. The same effect, same outcome. Uh, that's an example of what I'm saying. In my lifetime, we are uh, the most dangerous people in the world, and we think we're doing good. We do think we're doing good. and. If any of you go to church, when was the last time you heard a sermon against wealth, war, and the U.S. Empire? I'm sure you haven't. I, I never did. But if, if anyone was actually reading the story about the guy in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and say, what do you think his position on wealth, war, and empire would be? It'd be, it'd be against it, right? Am I... Am I losing this? Because it, it's like gotta be one of those obvious facts that no one wants to deal with. And the way that uh, the way that we get away with it in this country, not dealing with it, is what the Catholics call sins of omission. Uh, we have two types of sins in the church. You know, get sins of commission and sins of omission. Sins of commissions are one you know you're doing. You know, you know you're drinking too much. And, and it's not a good thing for you or your health or your behavior. You're not a good human being when you're drinking. And that's a sin. Okay? We all say that. Or in lots of ways we sin. And we know they're sins. We name them. But the bigger ones are the ones we never name or talk about. One of my favorite lines is, any church that has more moral clarity on birth control than it does on the possession of thermonuclear weapons is seriously unbalanced. And that, that means both the church that's sure you can use birth control and the church followers are sure you can't use birth control. Both of them have a lot of clarity on this issue right now, but nobody's talking about what about the moral position of having thermonuclear weapons? Nobody talks about that. That's what I mean. All right. So, uh, hmm. Anybody have any questions? I know you got a question. I've known Frank for oh, 30 right, years. Right. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Right. I still got more for questions. 
I, I'm just processing. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I get what you're saying. So like, with the sinning thing, you said how there's different sins, how there's the ones that people acknowledge and then the ones that people don't. Uh huh. Which I agree with that, I think, yeah. Um, but like, what about like, all of the ones like the drinking or the drugs or the whatever, like, do those weight differently? Because like, when people start like, like saying, oh, you're a sinner, you're a sinner. Well, it's like, isn't everyone a sinner? Because everyone does all these bad, bad things. It's like, do different sins have different weight? And does it matter? And does the weight like matter? Does that make sense? Yes. Everything just said yes. Now, just try to imagine that the uh, the guy in this book, who we say we're following, because I'm gonna, I'm presuming, if you're not a Christian, that's okay. You don't have to be a Christian. You don't. You don't. All I would say is that you all got the same problem as Christians do. We live in a pro-rich, pro-war, pro-U.S. empire world. And our Christianity and our atheism and our Buddhism and our whatever bends to that in this country. I don't know no major, major tradition that's speaking against wealth, war, and empire in this country with any kind of sustainable, believable procession. You know, the Catholics, so I will tell you, in our defense, we've got all the teachings. And if you want to find a teaching against wealth, I can find it for you. And the bishop says, yes, we do have the teachings, but we're not going to do anything with them. Yeah, that's how that's how our bishops get out of it. Right. Yeah, but nobody's... Uh, so I'm suggesting that the, um, uh, the practice of Christianity is, uh, is um, sorely inauthentic. And therefore... Uh, those who wish to uh, continue the practice of claiming Jesus need to address that as Americans. That's my uh, my pitch. And you know, look, behavior that is loving and nurturing ain't hard to see. Uh, in the uh, Catholic Worker Movement, uh, uh, you know, there's lots of arguments about whether, you know. <clears throat> Lots of different positions on human sexuality, for example. A lot of people uh, disagree with the church. <laughs> That's no big throw. Uh, but uh, when it comes right down to it, friends, uh, we live in community and we have a, a human relationship sexual uh, a policy. You know, we don't, uh, if you are starting a, a sexual relationship with anybody in the community, it's gotta be open. And we gotta, everybody's gotta know about it. Uh, and uh, uh, and we'll hold each other accountable uh, to the love we claim for each other. Now, you could, that's not saying anything about gay or straight or transgender. We don't care. It isn't. We don't. We don't care who you love. Exactly. The issue is how you love. And in community, if you're loving poorly, the rest of us will see it. Uh, and. Uh, and it's on our community to call each other on it when it's being done poorly. Uh, that's just one way in which we deal with the sexuality thing that's really a, a hot button these days, understandably. Uh, but it's not the only hot button. Uh, and, and as I've said, wealth, war, and empire also is that. And then when you live in community as we do, uh, it holds us accountable to uh, seeking wealth. Nobody, nobody, you don't move into a Catholic worker and seek wealth. Uh, you move into Catholic worker so you can live in community, do a work of mercy, and then have a side job uh, to take care of your own personal cash. That's what we're